Hi everyone, it's Dr. Crad. Here's a lens implant with a black ring in the middle. In this video, I will be implanting this lens for a patient who's previously had RK surgery. But what's the point of this black disc with a small aperture or pinhole opening within it? Let me explain. Have you ever been to the eye doctor and they have you look through a pinhole and it makes everything clear? It's like magic. The pinhole or small aperture opening creates clearer vision by eliminating scattered out of focus light rays. That's the idea behind Presbyopia Correcting Lens IC8 Aptera or AccuFocus. So here is the patient's case. We start by creating a paracentesis in between two of the RK incisions, followed by instilling more numbing medicine on top of and inside the eye. Then we fill the chamber with viscoelastic, being careful not to over inflate the chamber. If the eye pressure is too high, it can rupture those previous RK incisions. Next, we're gonna create our main incision and we want it at least a millimeter back from the limbus. Make sure you don't just go through the conjunctiva. You need to have a groove in the sclera. Cutting the conjunctiva wider than your incision will prevent swelling or chemosis of the conjunctiva. You need to have this gap between the entry of the scleral incision and the RK incisions so that your incision doesn't radialize into the RK cuts. Now, this was a 2.4 millimeter blade, and I could have fit it right between two RK incisions, but later I'm gonna expand my incision to 3.2 millimeters so that I can fit the IC8 Aptera lens into the eye. Here I'm performing the capsule erexis, which is the opening and the capsule of the cataract. If you think of the cataract like a grape, it has a peel. And the goal is to remove the inside of the grape and retain the peel because that peel is going to house the new lens implant. Next, we perform hydro dissection, which is when we use fluid to dissect the capsule or the peel away from the cataract. Now we're using ultrasound energy to break the cataract into fragments or crumbs. Breaking the cataract into little pieces is what allows us to remove the cataract through tiny incisions, incisions that are two to three millimeters instead of the old way, which may have been a whole centimeter in size. So things are moving along really well with this patient so far. RK patients notoriously have less predictable results after cataract surgery. My favorite lens implants for patients with previous RK are the IC8 Aptera and the Light Adjustable Lens, or LAL. The IC8 Aptera and Light Adjustable Lens can improve patient outcomes. The advantage of using these lenses is that they are both forgiving when it comes to residual refractive error. The LAL is adjustable after surgery, and the IC8 Aptera has an extended depth of focus. With the LAL, after the eye has healed from surgery, the strength of the lens implanted will be adjusted in the office using light. Patients will more likely end up at or near the intended target refraction and therefore have lower residual refractive error. But there are a few things that the LAL doesn't address. For example, the LAL can't correct irregular astigmatism and it doesn't reduce light sensitivity and fluctuating refractive error associated with the RK incisions. On the other hand, with the IC8 Aptera, the small aperture feature may mask irregular astigmatism, it may decrease light sensitivity, and it may mask fluctuating vision because as an extended depth of focus lens, the vision may remain clear over a broader range of dioptric power. I think this is why previous extended depth of focus lenses, such as the Symphony, worked fairly well in post-RK patients. But I would expect the nighttime glare and halos to be much less with the IC8 Aptera than with lens implants that have rings on them. So now we have finished removing the lens cortex and I am polishing the lens capsule. I think it's very important to do an excellent job polishing the capsule, especially for patients who are getting premium lens implants, because you wanna make sure that they like the technology and you don't wanna be fooled by an early PCO or posterior capsular opacification in the early post-op period. I don't like performing gag capsulotomy unless I'm certain the patient likes their lens implant. And if they have a PCO immediately after surgery, you won't know with 100% certainty. Here is a 3.2 millimeter blade. I like to expand my incisions precisely. 
I don't like to take my 2.4 millimeter blade and just approximate what 3.2 millimeters will be. I like to make sure it's perfect. So that's why I'm using a separate 3.2 millimeter blade. Here the IC8 Aptera is going in and the scleral incision is not radializing to the RK cuts. So the gap we created with our scleral incision was sufficient. After we place the lens in the capsular bag, we will remove the viscoelastic and then center the lens. The black ring within the lens implant is also called the inlay, and it's made from polyvanillidine and carbon. There are actually tiny perforations within the inlay. I wasn't sure the purpose of this, but I suspect it's the same opaque ring used from the camera inlay, which was also developed by AccuFocus. The camera inlay was implanted into the cornea and those little laser etched holes would allow diffusion of nutrients and oxygen through the cornea. I'm not 100% sure, but it sure makes me wonder if this opaque ring is the same one used in the cornea, although a slightly different diameter. Next, we are hydrating the incisions, making sure they are watertight. I rarely ever need a suture for my temporal incision, even in RK cases. I wouldn't mind putting one, but when the incision is created properly, you just don't need it. So here I notice the patient is roaming their eye around. They're not fixating at the lights. So in order to make it easy for them, I take one of the lights and I turn it off and then I turn it on. I make it blink so that they know exactly which light I want them to look at. And that helps me center the lens implant perfectly. Next, I'm going to instill some antibiotics inside the eye. And I'm also gonna make sure that the eye pressure is appropriate and I'm gonna double check my incisions. I'm gonna dry my main incision to make sure I see no leaking from it, and I'm gonna stress test it with that tap. And then I'm also gonna adjust the eye pressure by burping the paracentesis as needed. So now I have an excellent eye pressure and perfectly sealed incisions. Here I'm gonna show you how I turn off that fixation light, and then I turn it on, and then I can turn it off again. This is just to make sure that the patient is fixating where they need to. I do this when I notice patients are losing fixation. And you can see micro perforations in the inlay, thousands of them. I wonder if there's any other utility to having these perforations or if it was just an economical decision because things were already in line to producing the old camera inlay. So here is the patient one day after surgery. I'm just showing you the view. The cornea is looking good. The lens implant is centered. And now we'll go to one week after surgery. At the one week post-op visit, this was the patient's refraction. At a far distance, they were 20-20, and at near, they were J5. Now, Bachelon typically recommends, in order to get good reading vision with this lens, you need to target around minus 0.75, and that's what we did. We're about a week out, and the numbers can still change. People after RK tend to be hyperopic at first and shift in the myopic direction as they heal. That This occurs over the first month or two. So we'll see how this patient heals. I'm thrilled with their vision already. I mean, just the fact that the patient had RK is not complaining of any glare, no dim light, no loss of peripheral vision, and has excellent visual quality. I mean, I'm so happy with this result. So Consider this when you have patients who are going to get cataract surgery if they've had RK. Here I'm showing you the little laser etched holes within the inlay of the IC8 Aptera. As always, thank you so much for your attention. I hope you found this video helpful. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.